So what we're going to do here today is use our coyote lanyard connector and we're going to make this check socket out of copoly. So we have here our coyote lanyard connector and our alignable four and we're going to glue those two together and set them on top of our cast and then pull copoly around it. So the first thing I want to do is figure out my alignment for my lanyard connector and determine where I want my exit hole at and how I want it positioned on the cast. So I took cellulose acetate and I shined up the end of my cast again because it was wet and I want to get good adhesion with my coyote quick. That's something I like to do and I recommend doing that to make your bond better. Since you only have a small surface area with the lanyard puck connecting to the socket or to the cast, excuse me. So we have our orientation. We're doing copoly. We need to pull our vacuum nylon over it have our knot right up at the end. You could do a reflect on this, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And on our puck, since we're going to glue on the alignable four next, I want to make sure that that is abraded and roughed up really good to help the Coyote Quick glue adhere to it better. I take my 24 grit sandpaper, really score it hard, and then I'll take my utility knife and score it some more. We want a really good aggressive surface here to make sure we get good bonding. And everything's sitting well. Our knot's not in the way. Nothing's pushing or moving us away from our location. We'll get ready to take our glue and glue this on. Same thing as any other connector we put on. I make sure I've got a good bead of glue. So you have a very small surface area connecting the lanyard puck to the top of the cast. So don't be afraid to get a nice bead right on the very outside edge. After we set this on the cast, we'll just wipe off the excess. The last thing you want is for this lanyard piece to snap off when you're getting ready to pull plastic. We'll check our area, make sure we don't have any excess glue that will show up in the finished product if we have a big gob hanging outside of it. All right, our location looks good. Now we'll leave this set up for a couple of minutes to get good and cured and we're going to take this over today to the transfer jig and connect it to our alignable four in a transfer jig. I want to look at this cast in the upright position so I can get a little bit of an alignment out of them. All right now at the transfer jig we take our align four and we will take our glue plate and put on the end. This all comes in the package you get with your uh, alignable four when you purchase it. So we set the glue plate on. We'll drop a pyramid on here. Throw in four screws. These screws don't have to be in real tight. Just seat them in close. Get them snug. And then I'll set it up in the jig. Okay, so I'm going to put this in transfer, just a neutral position. And we'll take our cast and set it in place and get some kind of an alignment out of it and glue the two together. So I would call this a transfer jig bench alignment. It's just a, a nice way of looking at the leg and really seeing what you're shooting for and then you can glue everything into place. One of the things I like about doing this is it allows you to see your offset better, see your varus, your valgus, your extension, your flexion, whatever you'd like to do to your cast. Even though it's a check socket, we can still get it close to a finished alignment line and for me, standing it up this way works really well. You can always glue everything on your alignable four to your puck first and then turn it over and set it on top of your cast, but it's, to me, more guesswork and eyeball work that way. Okay, I think we about got an idea where we want this at. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it aside. I could have left it on top of the alignable four, put some glue in just to do a tag gluing and then turned it over and filled it up, but I'll be close enough here. So I want to fill my alignable four in, get it nice and full, and then a little over because we have two flat surfaces touching together. That way when I set that coyote lanyard on top there, I know I'm going to get some kind of a bond. And you've got just a few seconds to play with it. And this is why I call it a transfer jig bench alignment because we're not going back to a true transfer. I've got that moved around where I want. In this type of socket with Copoly, you can get much more severe offset and outset than you can 
with a vivac gluing a test socket connector to the end of it it's a lot less chance of breakage or damage the copoly is so tough the way it wraps around all this you can really get fairly radical with it so at this step what i want to do is take my coyote quick and i want to run some on my offsetting area i want to make a little better bonding bridge with my glue so what i'll do is take my glue and go from the top of my uh, a glue opening there and hit just on the edge of the puck so I get a little better adhesion. We don't want to fill this offset completely in. We want the plastic to lock this all in, but it doesn't hurt to make a little bit better bond coming up to the top of the lanyard puck. Then once that's set up and really tight, we'll get ready to pull plastic on it and we'll have a socket almost finished. Yeah, you don't want to fill it clear full. You just want enough to make the two connect a little better. All right, now that we're set up, we know our glue is dry. One of the first things I'm gonna do, which I always consider to be a tech tip, and that is loosen up my screws from my pyramid. If I didn't do this, if I unhooked everything from my stats adapter, and then I went to take off those four screws, if one of them was in there too tight, I run the risk of breaking my lanyard puck away from that cast. These urethane glues don't bond to plaster really well. They hook okay, but I don't trust them enough, so I like to loosen up my four screws, get everything as loose as I can, so it puts no stress on that connector where it's glued to that cast. Now that we've got it loosened up, we'll lift it up out of the jig, take the rest of our screws out of our pyramid, so we'll finish pulling these screws out. We've put no stress on our lanyard, and then we'll take our glue plate off. And one of the things I like to do with the glue plate is just take my utility knife and slide it up in between it and the alignable four and break that little bit of glue bond loose. And once you run this up in there, you'll hear it when it snaps and it comes loose from the plastic. We don't want to get too aggressive again because it's real easy to break everything off the end of that cast. There we go, it's nice and loose. One little spot here. Now we've got a perfect surface up here on top for our plastic to bond into and we'll have a really good strong bond with that copoly all the way around that alignable four. The only thing that will be exposed are the very ends of our alignable four so we can screw an adapter onto it. Let's we'll throw on our little foam dots. Make sure our exiting hole tool is in place on our puck. A little blue piece there. And now it's a matter of how we want to pull our plastic since we're drape pulling it. I have a bit of an offset. So what I want to do is bring my plastic around and I'm going to seam it in that offset channel so I can help fill that up with plastic and make it stronger. The more your offset is, the more critical this is in your plastic pulling. You want to fill that in with that seam if you have the excess plastic or take a chunk of plastic while you're still pulling and it's hot and fill that in. That will allow that plastic from doughing out or stress breaking when somebody walks on it. So all I'm going to do here is just line it up from my deepest spot of my offset and I'm just going to run a straight seam down the back. Alrighty, we've got our plastic on, we've got good vacuum, everything's still hot. We'll just trim off our excess and then we'll push down over the end of our alignable four and try to fill that up with plastic and then next we'll focus on that offset and how much plastic needs to fill that void if i had a, a greater offset i would make sure that i didn't trim it very close and i would just mush all the plastic i could into that offset making that as tough as i can so they'll never have a chance of that plastic failing when somebody's walking on this leg yeah, a really nice draw here. You can see how that plastic just bites right into the grooves that are cut into our lanyard puck. That's exactly what you want it to do. It locks that in place so it never is going to rotate or move on you. It keeps your alignment, keeps everything safe. And we'll cut this dude out, knock it off, sand open our exit hole for our lanyard strap, grind down to our tooling piece for our exit hole. You just want to grind this down until you see the complete face of it. You don't want to leave any plastic over it. It's going to be very difficult to get out, so make sure you get it good and open. You don't have to over sand. You want to leave as much as you can there so you can determine later how long of a channel you want on your socket. Sometimes a flush channel is better. Sometimes an elongated channel is better. It depends on the shape of the limb. We'll go ahead and clean the end of the socket off here. All we want to do is just expose our alignable foreheads. So I take it down just to the dots. And then later we can sand that off and make sure it's good and flush. So we haven't over sanded our connector. You can see how nice of a draw plastic we had in here. It's very tight. All that's left is our nylon, our little bit of glue. Right there, that's just the small edge that's holding that glue on the end of that cast all the time.
All right, we run in our grabber screw and pull out our tooling piece. Now it's just a matter of cleaning everything up. Clean off all of our top edge. We'll sand and buff our exit hole for our strap. And now let's buff our strapping exit hole. Get anything sharp or square off of that. That just makes that strap last twice as long. Get a nice soft edge. Buffing, buffing, shining, shining, making it look pretty. Okay, now we've got it all cleaned up. Let's go ahead and run our strap inside here and find a good location for our chafe. Okay, we've got a really nice pull. The seam is nice and tight. We could sand that down a little lower if we need to. Here we go. Let's get our lanyard chafe lined up. We will run this into our lanyard exiting hole. That's why we like to buff that and get that nice and soft and make a real nice roll on that edge that keeps that strap from getting chewed up. Get sure it's bottomed out in there completely. And let's set our chafe on here and take a look at where we want to line it up at. Get a nice straight pull. It makes it easier for the patient to don it. And that looks like a good spot right about there for a test socket. We'll mark it, go over and drill a hole and rivet it on. Okay, so this is a check socket, and since that's the case, we'll just go ahead and use a speedy rivet here. But if you don't think a speedy's heavy enough, a copper rivet would be completely acceptable for hooking this chafe on. Long-term use, probably a better idea. But speedies hold up real nice for temporary use. All right, we'll slip it in one more time. Pull it down, see how we look, and we should be ready to give this to the patient for a test drive. The nice part about the Copoly socket is down the road, if it's a nice fit and it works out well for alignment, the patient could use this as a shower leg or possibly a water leg. The Copoly makes a very durable socket that can have long-term extended use on it. The only thing I might do different is the seating area where the seam is. If it was needed, you could run that seam in a different location. Also with the Copoly socket, because it is entrapped in plastic, you can make more outset or more radical outsets with your Align 4 connector than you can with the Vivac. It's encased in the Copoly plastic, which makes it really tough. And then it's just a matter of taking your seam and running it down to a location where it fills in the big outset void or taking another piece of plastic while it's hot and building a buttress 